What do these flip-flops <clears throat> have to do with bank accounts? Well, for 1.7 billion poor today, this is how you move money from A to B. You walk to the water utility to pay your bill. You walk to the school of your child to pay the, tu to, to pay the tuition fee. And you walk and you walk and you walk all day. These are called Hawaii chapal in India, which means Hawaii slippers. In Ghana, they call them cholewati, which means let's go, friend, let's walk together. Very nice, let's go, friend. Using cholewati to move money is not only inconvenient, tiring, it's expensive. It's expensive to be poor. The question is why? Why have banks left almost a third of the world population unbanked? What an ugly word, unbanked. There are four barriers. Today I'll show you how we can solve for three of these barriers. But for the last one, the fourth one, I will need you. So stay tuned. The first barrier is the difficulty of reaching the poor where they are, meaning geographically and financially. 78% of the world poor live in rural areas. For a bank, in, uh, building a brick and mortar branch or installing an ATM in these areas is not cost effective. Even if it were, the service fees, the minimum balance requirements of bank accounts are just too expensive for the poor. Worse, the poor don't have very often the ID and address documents that are required to open a bank account. Today, that was a huge difficulty so far, but today we have digital technology. A mobile phone like this one uh, is accessible by 90% of the poor. They have access to a mobile signal. This is actually something that you can use to send money. In sub-Saharan Africa today, I can use this phone to send money as easily as I send a text message. Can you in this room do this? It's called mobile money. And it's spreading across countries where banks have left a number of large populations unbanked. In Bangladesh, there are 21 million users today of mobile money, about 13% of the population. But look at Kenya, 28 million of mobile money users, 58% of the population. In sub-Saharan Africa today, there are more mobile money wallets than there are bank accounts. So I think we can safely say the first barrier we can put it to bed. The second barrier is risk. For companies, uh, opening new markets, serving new clients with new products and services is very risky. There is no guarantee of success. But so what? Business, doing business is risky. Let's look at how mobile phones and mobile phone subscribers have grown in sub-Saharan Africa over the years. Back in 1996, there was no mobile phone market in Africa. In fact, most people didn't even have landlines. 
the companies who invested in this back in 1996 took a huge risk. But you can see the success. The rest is really history. Mobile money today is growing in a similar way. Here we see the example of a company called Paytm, which is an online marketplace in India. About four years ago, they have added mobile money wallets to make it easy to pay online and offline. In less than four years, they have connected 200 million customers. So I think we can all, also say that this second barrier is gone because you can see the, as these systems grow and as this innovation takes place, the risk is getting lower and lower for others to join in and serve. The third barrier is monopoly. Sometimes these pioneering companies who create new markets want to be the only one to serve this market. In the case of mobile money, they do that by keeping customers captive. If you use my mobile money service, you can only send money to other people on my mobile money service. You can see how this doesn't lead to growth. Think of phones. What, would, what good a phone would be if I could only call people on the same network? Not very useful. The phone system has been interoperable since the, right from the beginning. It means that if I have a phone number, I can call anyone with a phone number. Mobile money needs interoperability. But how do you create interoperability? There are many ways. One way is to make it very easy. My team at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has helped develop a software that makes it easy to uh, connect mobile money providers together and mobile money providers and banks. The software is open source. It means that it's free for anyone to use. It's called Moja Loop, from the Swahili word Moja, which means one. Using Moja Loop, governments and businesses can create shared platforms that loop together all the financial service providers in a country or a region. So interoperability is useful in itself to reduce monopoly. But interoperability enables something much bigger. I call it the Internet of Payments, where digital money flows as easily and fast as digital information today on the Internet, where a new class of connected customers, 1.7 billion of them, participate to the system and can better manage their lives where new products and services and new innovations create new markets to serve the needs of these connected customers. Transportation services, delivery services, solar batteries that you can lease and pay with very small payments on a daily basis. So where does that leave us? We have seen that digital technology enables us to reach the poor where they are. It is risky to do so, but there is a huge opportunity. Interoperability reduces monopolies and creates the Internet of Payments. Yet, and this is where you come into the picture, there is one more barrier. This barrier has nothing to do with economics, logistics. It is a mental barrier. 
When companies look at the unbanked, as this woman on the left, they see poverty. They think, this is not how my customer looks like. My customer has shoes, investments, a car. My customer looks like this guy on the right. They are wrong. They are wrong 1.7 billion times a day. So my challenge to you, build the internet of payments. If you're a financial service provider, move from your chair and look how you can serve and benefit from serving these new connected customers. If you're in the fintech space, download Moja Loop and see how you can connect to the internet of payments. If you're a student or a startup, Look, get closer to the connected customers in Africa and Asia to understand what they need and create products and services. If you're an educator, tell the story of digital financial inclusion that's unfolding right before our eyes. And when you see people wearing these, don't see poverty, see small business owner, see account holder, see buyer, see seller, innovation, growth, and tell them, let's go, friend, let's walk together. Thank you very much.